everyone. I'm at TCAF today. I'm on the third floor at table 303, right near the elevators. Um, Bones will be there. I'll be there. We're selling our Pretty Mouth books, uh, The Magpie, Volume 1, and The Scourge of Nine Point. Um, it's going to be great, so please come and say hello if you're in Toronto and you want to check out a really cool comic festival. Um, or just say hi. You know, whatever. <laughs> um, also exciting news, I have a Kickstarter that launched today. Um, it is for printing book number two of The Magpie, which is our horror lesbian love triangle with an Elder God comic. Um, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, we have some really cool merch going out with the Kickstarter and an exclusive cover. Um, <laughs> so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please go check it out. Um, you will also be able to buy book one through the Kickstarter, so if you haven't read The Magpie yet, you can check it out that way as well. Uh, there's a link in the description below if you're interested. So this is my first year um, having a table at TCAF. Uh, Bones and I have been on the waiting list a couple years, um, or we've been too afraid to apply. <laughs> um, but I'm super excited! Like, I've gone as an attendee in previous years, um, but I've never tabled there until this year. So I went once a few years ago to TCAF, um, and I totally chickened out of talking to people. Um, <laughs> I was like, I was almost at like the, the brink of like a panic attack when we got there. Part of it was because TCAF is super crowded as is, but it was also like I would be meeting like a bunch of artists I looked up to for the first time and like um, my peers in like the webcomic community. So I was like, oh my god, I don't want to like mess up in front of these people. I don't want to weird them out. Um, so yeah, it was a little traumatizing. <laughs> I was really scared. Um, so I... Uh, so, like, Bones was really excited because, like, at the time we were doing, like, a small, like, um, uh, LGBT fiction zine. And so we were, like, looking for artists and writers who might want to submit to it. Um, and we were, he was handing out, like, bookmarks and business cards and stuff to anyone he could. And he was super excited to, like, go meet people and, like, say hi to, like, our friends. And I was, like, having a little panic attack in the lobby. <laughs> um, so I, like, sat out for a little while and had to take some deep breaths and, like, pet myself up to, like, talk to these really cool people. Yeah, I was, I was so frightened. <laughs> it was not good. Um, it was the worst when I was trying to sit and chill out. Because I was sitting, like, at, like, a little bench in the library. Because um, TCAF takes place in the Toronto Reference Library. So I was just sitting there. And this old guy comes up to me, like, much older than me, like, probably in his 50s. And he comes up and... <laughs> I was, like, 20 at the time. He comes up and he's, like... He kept, like... You know, at first it was, like, polite small talk. But then he kept trying to get me to, like, go to a party at his house. And I was, like, no. <laughs> Please leave me alone. <laughs> um, so eventually he gave up and left me alone. But it was really creepy and weird. So, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> But after that, TCAF was good that year. I went and I actually talked to some people um, that I really looked up to and we bought some books. Like, um, I think we bought Oh Human Star, which is a really great uh, comic that you should all read. And yeah, we were, it was great after I finally got over my panic. <laughs> so yeah, if you are ever shy about like meeting your heroes or people you look up to at like a convention, I've, I've been there. It's, it's really scary. Um, cause like, yeah, you want to look cool in front of these people, you want them to like you, you don't want to come off as like a creepy fan. <laughs> um, so yeah. So that was a couple years ago, and then last year, Bones and I went to TCAF again as attendees, um, and I had a way better time <laughs> overall. <laughs> so I was still terrified of like meeting people, but I also had more people there that I knew. Um, just from, like, making friends online through, like, Twitter and social media and comic sites. Um, so we went and we met Joking Wolf out, fl fl out, fl <laughs> So we went and we met Joking Wallflower, who's really cool, and Windy Flamingo and Punk Oz and, um, like, a whole bunch of their friends and, like, my pal Joichi. And, yeah, and we went to, um, the Sparkler 
magazine mixer. Um, and we met some really cool people there and like lots of people where I'd read their comics and I was like, you're a real human. What is this? <laughs> um, but yeah, but it was a lot more chill going to like after parties and like meeting people we already knew and being introduced to new people that way rather than just like sticking our neck out and like trying to meet new people. Um, it's a lot less like terrifying. <laughs> The only problem with TCAF last year was that our travel and hotel was like super inconvenient the whole time. Um, so first, I booked a hotel that was right down the road from the library and TCAF, and then like a couple weeks before we were gonna go, I got this email saying that the hotel was under renovations, so they were gonna move us to like a new hotel, which... And the problem was, this new hotel was twice as far away from the event as we had planned on going. And we did not drive at the time. Um, also, who the heck wants to drive in Toronto? It's horrible. <laughs> so yeah, we were like, great, now we're gonna have to walk quite a ways the whole time. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, not so good. Um, okay, so we get to TCAF. We took the train in, which was super chill. Um, but then we step on into, into Toronto and we go to find our hotel, um, <laughs> which would have been fine because it was supposed to be like a 10 minute walk from the train station to the hotel, but my phone messed up, like the GPS just stopped working. So we ended up walking halfway across like the city before we realized we'd gone past our hotel. Um, so yeah, we did like, we walked for like an hour before we were like, wait, how have we not found this hotel? What is going on? So then we were able to like get my phone to work and we walked, we trudged back to our hotel and we were so freaking tired. <laughs> we just like collapsed into bed and we hadn't even made it to like TCAF yet. We'd only just arrived and it was like getting into the afternoon already. You're we like, the, the event's like half over. Oh my God, we're so tired. Uh, and yeah, we, because our hotel got moved so far away, we had to walk at least 30 minutes to like everything we needed to be at. I guess we didn't need to be, everything we wanted to go to. Um, and the thing is, Bones and I are like the kind of people who during like shows and events, we like to go back to our hotel to just chill. Um, and like rest and nap and stuff. <laughs> like I find travel and like crowds tire us out really fast. So anytime we needed to like go back to our hotel to like take a nap or chill out like in the quiet together or like in air conditioning because it was super hot. Um, we had to walk so far. It was so exhausting. Like and me and Bones are people who like walk everywhere all the time, but it was still like ridiculous amounts of walking anytime we needed anything. <laughs> um, oh yeah. And downtown Toronto was also really crowded, which made us even more tired. <laughs> so when we finally got to the show, uh, we had a really nice time. <laughs> we met up with our friends. We chilled out. We bought some cool books. Um, and yeah, so like the daytime was pretty nice. I think eventually we went back to our hotel to just chill and like rest a little bit. Cause like I said before, TCAF itself is super crowded. Like it's crammed. Like, cause it takes place in the library and there's like thousands of people that show up. So you're just kind of like squished like a sardine trying to like get to the next table or like up the stairs to like meet people. So yeah, it's a very exhausting ordeal. It's awesome, but it's very tiring. <laughs> Right, so then at the end of Saturday, we decided to go to the Sparkler Mixer, um, which they were hosting in like a little bar place nearby, um, <laughs> which was also a 30 minute walk from the library, which meant we'd have to walk like an hour to get from the bar to our hotel at the end of the night. But we were like, whatever, we'll just have fun and chill with our friends. <laughs> and not worry so much about the walk. Um, yeah, the walk wasn't so bad because we did have people with us that we could like talk to and joke with. Um, the time flew by a lot better because, um, I don't know, we, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and the mixer was super fun. Like I got to talk with a bunch of cool creators. We met like some of the voice actors who work at Sparkler. Um, we talked to the editors and like a bunch of like uh, creators and contributors. 
um, for a little while we were all sitting around just like drawing. We drew like our characters doing cute little expressions and like trading social media and stuff. It was really fun um, and super chill. Uh, like it was a lot of people just sitting in circles and talking. It wasn't like loud music and dancing. It was just like, it was very chill. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, the walk back to our hotel was like an hour and it was late in Toronto and we were like, oh God, what if we get lost <laughs> um, again? So yeah. Um, so yeah, that was um, leg weekend. We, we had really good calves at the end. I guess that's why they call it tea calf. Ha ha. Ha. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, but yeah, we did get to like explore a lot of cool places while we were walking around. Like, um, parts of Toronto are really pretty. Like, um, some, they have some nice, like, older looking buildings. Um, we, like, got to walk through the gay village, which was awesome. Um, and, like, we checked out some really nice bubble tea places. Um, and yeah, we just got to enjoy Toronto and the weather was super nice. So, like, it wasn't, like, rainy or cold or anything. Um, so we did have a good time there. <laughs> um, right. So we crashed at our hotel. We slept real hard. <laughs> oh, we were also in the middle of our first Kickstarter, which is when we printed uh, the Scourge of Nine Point issue. And so we were like hyped up on adrenaline from like doing our first Kickstarter ever. So we were super excited. And we, so yeah, by the, by the end of day one, we were super just tired from excitement and walking and fun. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we did not want to get up the next morning because like we were so sore. Like I remember I was like, I cannot move my legs. We have just walked way too much. <laughs> I am done. Um, and I think we stayed up too late. So then we had to like wake up early the next morning and that's never fun. Right. So second day rolls in. Right. So we went back to uh, the event to go say hello to our friends again and like buy any books that we were still hoping to pick up um, and meet more people. Um, part of the problems with the con, one of the problems with cons is that, like, you only have so much money and there's so many books you want to buy. Like, ugh. <laughs> so yeah, so usually, like, the second day we plan out what, like, books we want to buy and then we go buy them. So that was most of, like, the morning of TCAF day two. Um, it was still super crowded and, like, packed and, like, we were just zonked. We stopped by to see our friends and like buy books and stuff and then Bones and I eventually looked at each other and we were like, do you want to like go to the aquarium? <laughs> um, because the Ripley's Aquarium is like right nearby. Um, it would be close to like the train station from when we were leaving at the end of the day. So we were like, how about we just like chill out the rest of the weekend? You know, we did everything we wanted to do. Let's just go see some fish. Um, part of the problem was I'm terrified of fish like, scary as heck, um, and there's sharks there, and they swim above your head, and it's terrifying, but I went, and I touched a little shark, so I'm proud of myself, <laughs> um, but yeah, but we had fun, we just chilled out with some fish, we took a bunch of pictures, and then I think we went to the train station and just, like, passed out <laughs> for a while um because yeah we were super zonked and um but yeah <laughs> so um maybe this year we'll go to the rom no we won't because we actually have to man the table but <laughs> we we have many plans to go check out the the sites in uh toronto because we're nearby and we want to see the zoo, because I haven't been there since I was a little baby. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are my TCAF stories. Um, yeah, social anxiety sucks. <laughs> my heart goes out to you if you're in the same boat as me. We're in, we're in the panic boat. It sucks. <laughs> um, I'll be real, I don't have that much social anxiety. Like, I can small talk with people, especially if I don't know them. Um, but I find, like, as soon as it's someone that I look up to, I'm like, ah, I'm scared. What if I mess up? I'm so awkward and weird. Like, I guess just as expectations go up, my panic meter goes up. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll desensitize myself to that the more I go to this thing. Um, it's also great because, like, the longer I'm in webcomics, the more, 
I, the more people I meet and then like, Basically, every con is like a little friend meetup with everyone I've met. So like Fan Expo has been that for the longest time because like um, we've been going to Fan Expo for like four, three or four years now, probably longer. Um, and every time like I meet up with the same people, um, we say hi, we hang out. It's like a it's like a reunion. <laughs> um, and, you know, we catch up for like, what have you been, do been doing over the past year? It's really fun. Um, and TCAF is starting to get like that, where like every time I go, it's like I can meet up with all these people that I've talked to online and, um, yeah, make more friends and hopefully one day it won't be terrifying to go and meet my idols. <laughs> I don't think that day will ever happen because, oh, there's so many good artists. <laughs> so yeah, those are my TCAF stories. Um, what the heck have I been drawing this whole time? Let me tell you. <laughs> um, so I was studying um, cougars for uh, the Scourge of Nine Points. I had for our Kickstarter, because we were just finishing up the last of the Kickstarter stuff. Well, it's pretty much all finished now. Um, someone asked for a cameo of their OC, who is a cougar. So I was learning how to do it for when I work on their character design. Um, also, there are cougars like, throughout the comic, because all the, like, um, characters in it are based off Canadian wildlife, so it's gonna be cougars in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it was my first try at drawing them, so I just grabbed, like, a whole bunch of references and started studying. Um, I've drawn a bunch of domestic cats, so, like, regular house cats, um, because a lot of the characters in Nine Point are cats. Um, most of the main cast is cats. Uh, so it was... Uh, drawing big cats is similar, but different. Um, like, cougars have, like, way wider noses. Um, their eyes are similar, but their, like, face shape is different. And, like, I even see some parallels between their eyes and, like, drawing a wolf's eye or a coyote. Um... It's just that, like, that big predator type eye where it's, like, the front of their face and, like, they've got, like, the pointed corners and stuff. Um, so there's, like, a lot of parallels there that I didn't think would be there <laughs> between, like, a feline and a, and a canid. Um, so, yeah. Weird. <laughs> um, but I find, like, the more animals I draw, the more similarities I find between them. Uh, which makes sense, because, like... Most mammals look pretty similar. Um, so yeah, Bones is super into wildlife. I mean, I am too, but he's, like, way into wildlife and, like, ecology. So he was telling me all about how cool cougars are. And they apparently are the only big cats that purr. Because most big cats either chuff or roar. But cougars are sweet babies that purr. But they're also not sweet babies, because they might attack you. So don't try to pet a cougar if you run into one in the wilds. Be safe. <laughs> um, I also noticed drawing them, they're super muscular. Like, they've got huge back legs. Like, huge. Because you ever look at, like, um, say, like, a coyote or a cat or a dog, they've got super, like, thin little bony back legs. Um, I mean, like, their upper thigh is more meaty, because they use it for, like, pushing and jumping and stuff. Um, but the actual, like, um, what do you call it? I guess, like, their foot or ankle is a lot skinnier, but, like, pumas, oh my god, they've got meaty legs and huge paws. Like, I would not want to be at the receiving end of those paws. <laughs> Ugh. Um, so yeah, these are very, like, um, gestural sketches. Like, sometimes I'll go in and just draw, like, basically like trace over the form I'm trying to draw to like break it into parts a bit better and then I'll start to like try to draw it by eye. Um, it's it's like it's very helpful as a digital artist to do that. Yeah like I guess just try to avoid like tracing over the entire thing and then like pulling that off and drawing on top of it. Like you want to be able to just break it down and then work off it from from like your brain I guess. Um, but it's okay to, like, deconstruct things to understand them. Speaking of deconstructing things, I also will grab, um, the skull 
or the skeleton of the animal I'm trying to draw. Um, animals and humans. Like, I'm always grabbing, like, pictures of human skeletons to, like, figure out how they work. Because it's always good to get a refresher, even if you think you know something. Um, I just realized in what I'm drawing right now, like, trying to draw the cougar body. It looks a lot like a bear body, but it's not supposed to be, so. Whoops. Um, guess I need to work on that more. Um, but yeah, I tend to grab... I tend to grab the skeleton or like diagrams of their musculature also really help, whether it's like a medical book or something or like uh, usually like the drawings help because like I don't really want to look at a cadaver of an animal to see their muscles because like ugh. it's one thing to look at a skeleton that's been all like cleaned and set up in a museum. It's very different to see like ugh. It was also really sad because like when I was trying to find pictures of like cougars, there's a whole bunch of images of them being like dead and carried off by some hunter and I'm like no I sad <laughs> um but yeah get get your get your nice uh references and um yeah get your references of like the structure of different animals it really helps to see like how the jaw connects to the skull or like where the eyes are set in the skull um because I find like especially with animals with fur it's really easy to get kind of lost in the fur because it adds like extra volume and it like muddles with the form. So just understanding like all the solid bits underneath really helps when you're actually drawing it. Um, it also helps to grab like different expressions of the animal. So like see how they look with their mouth open, how they look like when they're snarling, um, how do they look like when they're resting or when they're asleep. like. It's really important to see how the different muscles work when they're doing different actions. I mean, eventually you're, you probably have to draw these expressions on these animals, especially if you're doing like a furry comic like I am. Um, so make sure you know how their faces will look if they're yelling, you know. <laughs> um, I also grabbed some photos of like little cubs because uh, it's also a good way to see how the muscles form and like get a, a new look at the 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 form and the body and see how things like mature. Oh, they're so cute. I love the babies. I think next I need to do some studies on how I need to do studies on like how the fur looks, especially painted. Um because Scourge of Nine Point is like a full color comic. Um it's a lineless style. So I need to learn how to draw these animals and paint these animals without relying on my line work. Um, don't get me wrong, like, line work's a really great place to start because I'm, like, understanding how the forms break down. Um, I, I can get a bit more exploratory without getting lost in, like, choosing colors and, like, um, laying down shading. Um, so, like, I, I plan to start with these, uh, sketches and, like, outlines. Um, and building up the structure and then work to painting and learning how to get the forms that way. So hopefully that works out. Do you guys have any advice for drawing like one big cats or animals or like life drawing that you can recommend? I personally love to like go to the zoo because like I mentioned like Bones and I plans to like go to the Toronto Zoo and like um, check out like any place where we can meet animals. <laughs> Um, that isn't, like, a horrible, abusive animal show or something. Um, but, like, we want to visit sanctuaries and zoos and stuff and, like, see these animals, like, live and draw them. Um, because I know that will... Drawing something from... <laughs> drawing something in 3D in real life, um, is very different than drawing from a photograph. Um, for one, you can, like walk around say like the animal or you can see like how they look when they're in motion um you get a better sense of like the depth and volume of their form so it'd be really fun to go somewhere and just sit and draw the animals for a while um i bought a watercolor sketchbook to do just that <laughs> so yeah that's that's like a, a goal um yeah the thing about photographs is they really like flatten things or like you have to find, like, a whole other photograph to, like, understand the form. Whereas when it's right in front of you, you can just, like, go check it out by moving or tilting your head. <laughs> um, 
All right, um, I think that's all I have time for today. So yeah, for this video, I did a lot of studying. And I think at the very end, I get into like drawing uh, like a, a cougar anthro. So look forward to that at the very end. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have for today. Um, thank you so much for listening. Please check out our Kickstarter uh, if you think you're interested. Um, say hi if you're at TCAF today or tomorrow. Yeah, we're also going to be at Anime North later this month, so check that out if you're interested. If you have any questions or if you'd like to submit a video topic request, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more cool art videos or comic talks um, or videos about writing comics because Bones does a bunch of those on here. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye! Yeah. The funny thing about furries is like, you just get their legs right and their faces right and maybe their their hands might be different depending on like what kind of animal they are. But the torsos are all generally humanized. So, what the heck. I always think it's going to be harder than it is, but you just slap it all on that human torso and you're good. I guess sometimes it's hard to get the neck to connect, like, the shoulders to the head, depending on, like, what kind of head they have, and if they have lots of fur, because animal necks are very different than human necks. Us humans have super, super skinny little necks. Ugh. Anyways. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Goodbye!